Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it has been so, 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 so long. I feel like I drop a new video every se seven months, but um, I have a lot of new fun things coming. I've been vlogging all summer. I moved out on my own for the first time from my parents' house. I got a brand new apartment. I got a whole bunch of apartment vlogs and I have just new work career type content coming for you guys um so yeah that's exciting as you can see from the title of this video i'm gonna tell you the story about when i quit my dream job so i'm just gonna give a lot of disclaimers i'm not gonna say anything in this video that i wouldn't say or for instance i wouldn't tell somebody in an interview or that I wouldn't express to my former employers itself. This is all just about my personal experience. I'm the fed, so I'm not gonna be surprised if you guys run out there and figure out the place I'm talking about. It's not a secret, I'm just not saying it. If you care that much, you guys go do the extra work. I like to tell very detailed stories, like, and I'm also gonna be very general in this story. My friends know the true tea. I'm gonna keep this very general, but I like to tell stories kind of elongated so that you get a full picture of where I'm coming from. So <laughs> here I go, 45 minutes later. Um, all right, so it all started with an email and your girl got receipts. I pulled up the email. It started on December 6, 2018. I sent an email, oh no, no. let me back up, let me back up. So, I studied film in college. For those of you who like know me or who've watched my a few of my other videos, you guys kind of know I studied film in college. After I graduated, a little before I graduated, actually, I realized I wanted to get into PR. But all my experiences had been in production. So after college, I got a job at MTV and VH1. I had interned at MTV a year prior um, in Los Angeles, and this job was going to be based in New York. So. It was a contracted position, meaning I started September and my end date was December 13th. It wasn't PR or talent relations related, which was kind of the drawback. And I told myself, like, if I got an opportunity to do PR, I would take it because it didn't make sense to stay at this company just because it was a big brand or a good look. Like, let me get into this and see if there's something I want to do. So I would be at my desk at MTV, you know applying to jobs blah 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 and i remember doing a search of america's best publicist i don't know why what came over me to do that search but i did a search of america's best publicist and lord and behold what would become my job the name of the lady pops up so i'm doing my research i'm like oh my god like she has repped rep like represented for people who don't know pr terms um, some of like the biggest celebrities ever and she just seemed like a total boss lady I'm like I want to be her like this is who I need to learn from so I'm continuing to do my research and I realize she has a firm here in New York and I'm like oh my god I'm gonna shoot my shot so December 6 2018 11:32 a.m. should have been working I wrote hello my name is Onika, and I'm emailing to inquire about potential job opportunities at Job Here. I have a huge interest in talent publicity, and I would love to speak to a hiring manager about the opportunity to work at your company. Attached is my resume. Is if there is anyone I should reach out into regards, reach out to in regards to my interest, or to forward my cover letter and resume to, I would love to connect with them. Thank you for your time and consideration. So I sent this to like a very generic email. 11:32. At 11:56, I got a response from the owner of the company. Thank you. We'll keep this on file and possibly set a meeting in January. We aren't currently looking at the moment, but we may be for next year. Remind me after the holidays? Question mark. I responded back. Hi, and then her name. Thank you for your response and your consideration. I'll be sure to inquire about opportunities in the new year. Happy holidays to you and your team. Thanks. She says, thanks, you too. So at this point, remember I told you my contract at MTV is supposed to end on December 13th. 
So I set a meeting with my supervisor at the time. I was like, hey, um, I want to talk about possible extension. And she was super cool. Like, we went upstairs. Like, she knew my dreams and, like, where I was trying to be at that moment in my life. And she was extremely supportive. But not. I get an email from this lady on December 13th. Good morning. Are you available next Tuesday for an interview? December 18th. And I go, hi, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I am, basically. Whatever. You know where the story's going. So I'm going to fast forward up a little bit. I go to the interview, um, and I nail it. I feel so good. The time I come back to the office, like, she's already shot me an email, like, um, it was so nice meeting you. Like, give me a call after work. Because she knew I was still at MTV. <sighs> Some red flags I missed during the interview is that she told me the job was a fully remote job. So there was a five of us on the team and we worked from home. So now like we're in 2020, you know, COVID has happened and now everyone's kind of like working from home, remote and whatnot. But at that time, like the appeal to work from home wasn't, it wasn't attractive to me. So I didn't know why I didn't take that further into consideration. Also, she was like, during the interview, she's like, it's a very crazy job. Like, you got to be crazy to do this job. Like, it's very, very, very fast paced. So my mindset, my hustle was like, yes, this is what I need. Like, I'm going to be a publicist. I'm working with the best people in the game. I start the job January 2nd, 2019. I kid you not, my life went downhill from there. Um... It was the most toxic job for me that I will ever have in my life. And I say will ever because I've grown so much to know that I don't ever need to be back in a position where I feel like I can't balance, have a work-life balance. So a little bit about the job. I was a publicity assistant, meaning that I literally assisted the publicist. So it was... The boss, two publicists, and two assistants. Um, as I said, I was working from home full time. And that was just a really big shock for me because it wasn't a 10 to 6, a 9 to 5. Like right now, my current job while I'm working at home, it's 10 to 6. So my expectations is to do my best work from 10 to 6. At this job, I was waking up at like 7 in the morning rolling over and i'll be on my computer until about like 11 p.m every night now there was nights i there were days i weren't brush i didn't brush my teeth until it was like bedtime i wasn't eating i was not sleeping right i had constant anxiety like i got constant anxiety like when our celebrities were doing press, I would have to like wake up at like three in the morning, two in the morning, four in the morning. It honestly depended on where in the world they were located and like call their SUVs, make sure they got into the car, text them the, the name of the driver. Like, and if I did not do this, I was legitimately penalized. And at first it just seemed normal to me. I was like, this is what I have to do to become the publicist that I want to be. And I didn't realize that it was extremely, extremely, extremely toxic. So I wasn't eating right. I was barely sleeping. I was. Con I would take my phone and my laptop to the bathroom. I had two phones, a work phone that she gave me, a regular phone, and I would take it with my laptop to the bathroom because I was always so paranoid that I would miss something and get yelled at, and I was always worried about the repercussions. Um, it's bad enough that like I didn't have a job with P I didn't have PR experience. So I had to step take a step back and realize like Onika, you were blessed enough to get this job, but you really don't have experience. I was always afraid to ask for help. I always felt like I was being a bother. I felt like I just always felt like I wasted her time. Like I wasted her money like she invested in me and she would regret it and that was very painful because I was legitimately doing this job the best that I could so I was crying every day I like I legitimately cried every day I knew it was bad when 
<laughs> I went to the hookah lounge with my two friends and I had my laptop and my phone at the hookah lounge, y'all. Hookah in one hand at a bar on my laptop. That's when I knew it was bad. Like, I couldn't ever hang out with anybody. I was craving human attention. I was social distancing before social distancing was a thing. It's like I was home all day, every day, and because I didn't have like a set hour, I could never be like, hey, I'm, let's meet up at seven. And if I did that, you best believe I was meeting up with you with my laptop. Like I would be at the bars with my laptop, just just, just want to catch up with a friend, be there for a friend, laptop. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Um, let me send this email to a client. And I was normalizing it and I felt myself over explaining to people. I had two ends of the spectrum. The people were like, Onika, you want this for so long. Push through. You can do it. If there's anyone I know who can do it, it's you. And then there was the other people like, girl, quit that. It ain't worth it. Your mental health comes first. And I was stuck in the middle. I knew mental health was something you should take serious and that it wasn't worth it for a job. But a part of me really didn't want to let them down. So it didn't even, it wasn't even about me at one point. It was about them. Um, I'm not going to get into detail of like what really, like what was my boiling point. I just knew I had to put in my resignation and I did it in June. So I started in um, January and I ended in June. And when I did it, I screamed, but then I also cried because... I just remember feeling all these emotions like I made a mistake and like no one is ever gonna hire me and like why didn't I just seek out more help and then I realized that I was truly truly doing the best that I can like everyone around me see me change and not saying in a bad or a good way but literally just like I was never like I never felt like myself those six months like I was just so out of it and I don't even feel like the team I worked with realized like I don't think they realized because they were so caught up in this this was normalized for them and that's when I realized like I'm not normalizing an unhealthy work life like I'm not doing it I don't care if it's my dream like I'm not doing it anymore and it took me so much strength to get to that point and to write this resignation letter anyways I did my resignation and I realized that I was gonna be a better person after that. As dramatic as that sounds, I just I knew God would open new opportunities for me. I know y'all are probably dishing for more tea, but I think that's as general as I need to be, if I'm gonna be honest, because number one, I don't want this video to be long. Number two, it might not have been for me, but it, it's for other people. But let me tell you guys what I've learned since then. Number one, it is okay to turn off. As millennials, I feel like we glorify, glorify this glorify this hustle culture, this boss chick culture and whatnot. And there comes a fine line between hustle culture and unhealthy. So while I like it's easy to get caught up in the entertainment industry, specifically like PR because like you know I had red carpets I had I was taking clients to like Good Morning America and see Sirius XM with the publicist not just by myself but um it's very easy to get caught up it comes to a point where it's like it's no longer healthy like you have to really sit and realize what are you doing this for like what part what are the parts of the job that you like and how can you find that in another job that may better fit what you need in your life because to other people, this may have been at the time in their life where they didn't mind waking up at 7 a.m., working from 7 till midnight every single day, not sleeping, not eating, getting sick every day. I was getting so sick because my body was in constant flight or fight mode, and I did not know why until my friends really broke it down to me. They were like, you're so stressed out that your body doesn't even know what it's trying to fight. Like, and I was just like, wow that's crazy like that's really crazy opportunities do come and go so that that had me pretty down for a while like I resigned knowing that um 
I was walking away from a great opportunity. Like, you guys saw how I got the job. That's very unconventional. Like, I shot my shot. And I shot it well. And, and the bait that got caught was a good caught catch. Like, she was an amazing woman. I still look up to her to this day. Um, but opportunities do come and go. And, you know, she wishes me the best. And I've connected with them a couple times since leaving. But... That wasn't the end all of my success. I landed a job. It did take a while for me to land another job, um, which brings me into another thing um, that I've learned is that the industry is very small. So I kid you not, 13, like let's say I had 13 interviews. Every interview I went on, they were like, oh my God, you worked with beep. Like, that's the best of the best. It was like everyone wanted an inside scoop to how it operated. And I had to remain as neutral and as professional and respectful as possible. And I would just literally tell them it wasn't for me. Like, I didn't like the work from home culture. Um, I really needed a better support system. I really wanted to be in an office with like-minded people. And, you know, it that, that was a legit reason. It was a legit reason. <laughs> it was a legit reason. And everyone understood that. But the industry was so small. I had walked into this interview and the CEO goes, oh, I spoke to blank. And I'm like, could you have met with me first? She's like, oh, she said you were such a lovely girl. Like, she felt so bad when you left. And I was just like, bro, I'm not going to get a break. Like, if I'm doing any PR job, I'm not going to get a break because everyone knows who she is. Like, she was built off of old school PR. Like, she's a boss. Like, period. So, the, I learned the industry is very small, so do not ruin or um, break any ties or cut any bridges. Um, I was afraid for a while that was going to be the end, and it wasn't. Um, another thing I've learned since then is that sometimes you can't always act so irrational, and I've learned that now. Um, I was in a position where I could have done that because I was living with my parents and I didn't have much responsibility. So it's not like I was gonna quit. And then like for those four months, I didn't get a full-time job. Like I had rent to be paid. And now I've realized like, okay, if this is something you're gonna do, you have to make a plan. Like now that I pay my own rent, it's like, I would have to have a plan. Like, okay, if I leave this job, how much, month, how much months could I potentially go without a full-time job? I hope this video is helpful or, or inspires someone to, to know that like your current situation doesn't have to be your forever situation. Um, make a plan and most of all, put your mental health first. If there's anything that 2020 has taught us is that life is way too short and sporadic. So it doesn't make sense to be at a place where you're unhappy. So many people, millions and millions of people have lost their jobs just to this virus alone. And it's like, I get it like people can't just up and quit a job like I had the privilege to do at that second but it's not if it's gonna make you unhealthily sick the way it was making me it's not worth it I promise you a job that you want will come along time to not change or give up on my dreams but figure out other ways to make my dreams come true in a way that was authentic and true to me in a way that like I was not losing myself and the biggest thing I could take away is that like now I'm on a team where I feel heavily supported and I realized that is what I was missing from that job I needed a support system and although back then I didn't know what that looked like I know what that looks like now so it doesn't matter what going forward I know what I need and I think that's the biggest lesson I could take away I think we all have to experience things and go through things. It made my skin so much more thick. So um, that is all for my story today. I hope you guys took something from this. Stay tuned for more content coming soon. I'm going to continue to make content on PR. I'm going to get some lifestyle content. And yeah, just give me requests of whatever you guys want. I've gotten so much out for and support from the internship video. So I want to keep making videos like this that's going to be useful to a specific niche audience. I'm not trying to like become like make YouTube my main source of income. I just want to make videos that help people. So 
yeah, talk to you guys soon. And I promise it is not going to be another seven months. I promise. I'm actually going to shoot another video right now.